And now your host, Richard Thomas. Good evening and welcome to It's a Miracle. Tonight, we're going to take a look at how events in the past can sometimes play a miraculous part in the future. How the choices we make today may be repaid tomorrow with the gift of a miracle. We begin with a story that perfectly illustrates how even the most frightening and painful experience may indeed have a greater purpose. Nineteen ninety nine was a bad year for Rob Gingry of Memphis, Tennessee. Recently divorced and separated from his son, Rob channeled his depression into motorcycles and living on the edge. His girlfriend, Kale Smith, remembers. He was at the point in his life where he just did not care anymore. Party all the time. It was where's the next place? Where are we going? Where's the next party? He was always catching up on his motorcycle and the faster the better. Then, one afternoon in May, Rob and Kale were leaving a restaurant along with Rob's close friend, Randy Brewer. Rob and I were going to ride our bikes over to his house, and then Kale was riding with another friend of ours in their car. After the couple said their goodbyes, Randy and Rob sped out of the parking lot. they headed back to Rob's house, the two friends played a dangerous cat and mouse game, each trying to outrace the other at speeds of up to 100 miles per hour. We were hot riding back and forth you know, on the main streets. We got in the neighborhood and uh, we turned to one corner and Rob just shot off. I wasn't real familiar with all the streets, so I you know, drove down kind of, you know, at a slower pace. Meanwhile, Kale and her friend had taken a different route to Rob's house. We went kind of the back road. And as we get here, I noticed that his motorcycle wasn't here. So I looked at Kat and I said, he's down. And she said, well, let's just not jump to conclusions. And I said, he's down. I can feel it. I know he's down. The two women sped off in search of Rob and Randy to make sure they were all right. But they didn't have to travel far to discover that Kale's horrible premonition had come true. Oh, my God, there he is. There he is. Stop the car. Stop the car. When we turned the corner, there he was. Motorcycle was flipped upside down. Pipes were sticking out. It, it was a mess. He's laying on the curb, you know, with blood all over him. Kale was uh, hysterical. She was, you know, crying and uh, trying to hang on top of him and, you know, see if he's alive or whatever. The paramedics were coming up at about the same time, and they jumped out and pulled me away from him. We didn't know. He had a broken neck, we didn't know. And they finally got him on one of those boards. He kept saying, where's Kale, where's Kale? He looked at me and he, he did like this on his lips and he wanted me to give him a kiss. So I laying down, I gave him a kiss and then he shut his eyes and I thought he died. I mean, I, I really thought that was it. Rob was still alive, but badly injured. The paramedics rushed him to the regional medical center in Memphis. What do you got? 36 year old male, high speed motorcycle wreck. His injuries were extensive, including four skull fractures, a broken hand, and a broken leg. But it was his behavior that had Dr. Preston Miller most concerned. Sir? I'm going to be checking your pupils. I need you to lay very still, OK? Look it's pretty typical of folks who have head injury. If it's a significant injury, to be combative, confused, a little bit out of it. Sir? So he went from our shock trauma room to the CAT scanner, where he had a CAT scan of his brain. So what he has here is a little epidural hematoma. The CAT scan revealed that Rob had received a traumatic head injury, 
a small blood clot had formed in his brain. I don't know if he's going to need surgery. Those sometimes stay the same and sometimes they get worse. There's really no way of knowing. If they stay the same, people do great. If they enlarge, it either leads to serious brain damage or death. I did the CAT scan the next morning about 7 o'clock in the morning, and the blood clot had tripled in size. So they rush in and they start telling us we need to do emergency surgery. Rob was rushed to an operating room where neurosurgeons spent the next several hours opening his skull and removing the blood clot from his brain. When they finished, there was nothing left to do but wait and pray that Rob would regain consciousness. What he has is called an epidural hematoma. He does have the doctors came out and said he could be a vegetable. I thought about, what if he did die? Keep a close eye on him. I cried more than anybody knew. Not only was I going to lose the person I was with, but Bob's my best friend. Skull fracture. I never gave up hope on him. We prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed. Miraculously, two and a half hours after the surgery, Kale's prayers were answered. I wake up. I'm in a room by myself, got hoses, you know, ivies hanging on me. I don't have a clue where I'm at. Don't remember having a wreck. The nurse walks in and she's like, oh no, please be still. And, and I'm like, well, what am I doing here? He got better like overnight. I mean, he had brain surgery on Monday and is went at home in the bed on Friday. It was just totally miraculous that he recovered the way that he did. But as astounding as his physical recovery was, it was nothing compared to the life-altering change that had taken place in Rob's attitude. I had a whole new perception, a whole new feeling uh, inside. I felt clean. This wreck was the best bad thing that ever happened to me because it was a reality check, sobered me up, straightened me up. But there was still one nagging question in his mind. When you hear about a child that dies in a car wreck or anybody passes away, you know, you wonder why a person like me was saved. Why am I here? Is it, was it just an accident that I lived? Nearly a year to the day after his accident and at the very same location, Rob would receive the astonishing answer to his question. The dramatic conclusion when It's a Miracle continues. Next, the lives of a mother and her children are touched by a miracle. I didn't know anything about what was going on or if my daughter was okay. And I was so scared, I was just screaming and I didn't know how to help her. When a motorcycle accident nearly cost Rob Gingrey his life, he underwent a remarkable transformation. With a newfound sense of purpose, he channeled his energy from motorcycles and parties to starting his own business as an electrical contractor. Going this, this entire... I believe that prior to the wreck, I would not have been able to handle the business. It's very, uh, very neat. I'd like to say I'm on my way back up now. And I thank God every day for that. For the whole house. But Rob still wondered why he, of all people, would be given a second chance in life. And then, Almost a year to the day after his accident, Rob was driving past the same intersection when he received the answer. No, I'm not gonna make lunch today. It's not gonna happen. Uh, yeah. I was headed back to the office in a dead run. You know I'm in a hurry. I'll call you back. Bye. I come up as a car wreck right in front of me. I mean, two trucks hit each other, and I mean, it's right in front of me. First one on the scene. Rob ran to the nearest vehicle while calling 911 on his cell phone. Inside the other vehicle, Vicki O'Brien was just beginning to regain consciousness. I didn't know anything about how we had flipped over or anything. I just knew that I was upside down and I really couldn't get a grasp on where I actually was. Got help on the way, all right? When Rob was certain the first driver was okay, he turned his attention to Vicki's truck. When a truck damage is as bad as that one was, you don't know what you're fixing to find. Hello? Hey, are you all right? And you're praying that a cop might show up because I don't want to do it. Come right on out behind her, baby. I'll hold the door off of you, okay? Oh. I managed to get the driver of the vehicle to the curb. 
I sat her down in the grass, and the little boy sat down right beside her. Y'all right? I got, I've already called an ambulance. Everything's gonna be all right. And that's when I started screaming about my daughter, and that my daughter was hurt very badly. My baby is in the car! I go back to the vehicle, I look in, and there is a girl hanging upside down. She's unconscious, and she is just limp with the seatbelt around her neck. Her lips and her skin were exactly the same color. She was one solid color blue. Worse still, the truck was leaking fluid, and the engine was still running. Rob knew that if he didn't act quickly, the truck could catch fire or explode. Baby, are you okay? There was no room inside. The truck was crushed, and I couldn't get the seatbelt unbuckled. And at this point now, I'm praying, please don't let this truck blow up. I'm, I'm throwing a double prayer to God. You know, don't let this baby die. Whatever you do, please don't let her die. And, and please don't let the truck blow up. Luckily, I had a small Leatherman pocket knife on me, and I was able to use that to cut the seatbelt. Rob quickly cut the young girl free, but she remained unconscious. I had this child laying in front of me, and I really didn't want to move her because I thought she might have some internal injuries. So I decided I would stay inside with her, praying that an ambulance or somebody would show up. Get her out! I didn't know anything about what was going on or if my daughter was okay. And I was so scared, I was just screaming, and I didn't know how to help her. I just knew that somebody was in there helping my daughter. After 10 terrifying minutes, paramedics finally arrived. My baby is in there. My baby is in that car. Get her out. Luckily, the truck never caught on fire. It's not good. All right, step out, sir. All right, I got the seat for you. With the situation finally under control, Rob left the scene without a word. Vicki and her children were taken to a local hospital. Miraculously, no one had suffered any serious injuries, including her daughter, Camille. The doctors told me that had somebody not cut her out of that seatbelt, she would have suffocated. Camille? That there was no way that she probably would have made it. But Vicki had no way of thanking the heroic stranger who had saved their lives that day, until she stumbled upon a clue to his identity. A few days later, we decided we were going to go clean the truck out and get our personal possessions out. We looked in the back seat, and there was a knife that we'd never seen before. And I said, this must be the knife that cut my daughter out of her seatbelt. So I turned it over, and there was a man's name on it. When I got home, I looked in the phone book, and the man's name was right there. <laughs> it was the only Rob Gingery that there was. Rob was at home working when the telephone rang. USA Electric. Hi, can I speak to Rob Gingery, please? Yeah, this is Rob. And she says, were you at the scene of an accident? And I said, yes. And she says, well, I've got something that belongs to you. We found your knife in the truck. I gave him my name, and I said, well, I believe you're the man that saved my daughter. I can't believe this. How, how are you? I'm great. And he couldn't believe that she made it, and he had been a part of saving her life. It was a miracle to him. He couldn't wait to meet us. But it was Vicki who was truly in disbelief when she learned about Rob's motorcycle wreck at that same intersection just one year before. I couldn't believe that he happened upon our accident at the same site where he had his. And I felt like his survival was such a miracle and God let him live for a reason. And that reason was to help my daughter and save my daughter's life. He says he's not a hero, but I believe he's my hero. And he's my daughter's hero. I think it's a miracle because he saved us. And if he wouldn't have been uh, there, I would have died. There you go. We got future, bi future bikers of America. Today, Rob is a close friend to Vicki and her family. And while it took a year and two near tragedies to bring them together, 
The experience they share taught them all the lesson of a lifetime. I don't go to church every Sunday, but I do pray to God every day. And thank him for saving us and saving Rob a year ago. Prior to my wreck, I took the blessings I've had in life for granted. And I don't do that anymore. The lessons I've had in the last 18 months have taught me to look at things different. Even when they seem their worst, look around, because it could be worse. Every day I take time to say thank you, God. Thank you for what I've got.